Life was exciting. I had two different upbringings. I had a mother who was fully in the faith, following Christ, and I also had a had a father who was um, in the gangs. So I was gang affiliated since birth. Because I was more raised by my mother, because my my father was more often inside prison, it enabled her to be able to implant a core belief system in my faith in Christ. And I didn't think I was ever confused. I, I was just always a believer ever since a young kid. Just the choices that I'd make would, wouldn't follow through with the seeds that have been planted from my mother. It would only be a matter of time that I'd be drawn to embrace the same lifestyle that my, my father was living. At about 12, I ended up with a boyfriend who was probably about 19 years old. He sold me a dream, basically. He just said, come on, that's us, we're, we're out of here. I'll pick you up in the middle of the night um, and we'll run away, you can run away from home and come, come and live with me. And I thought, okay, freedom, so I'm, you know, I'm out. <laughs> that's where all the drugs, the alcohol, you know, physical abuse, all of that started. You know, always trying to look for your next hit to make you feel a bit better. Wake up feeling lost again, back to the alcohol, feel happy. It was just kind of like waves of up and down and just depression, I think. You know, sometimes it felt good to be around those people. In my mind, a lot of the time, they were showing me love and family and friendship. But then on the other end, you, you know, you've got the kind of mental abuse and the physical abuse and all that type of thing, and just driving you deeper down the wrong track, I think. Gang life was normal to me. It was, it was home, it was my family. We can love our family, but sometimes the choices we make hurt and destroy our family in many ways. A lot of people in the gang life would relate to that because they love their family, but you know, their actions most often will destroy or hurt them. 12 to 13, probably alcohol, beers, you know, started off in beers. Still at 13, I would have probably had started taking um, weed. 18, 19, that's when meth, I would have become reliant on meth um, and coke. That would have led to prison. I think I got a year. We just got caught up in the lifestyle, started basically addicted to, to stealing, robbing, to drugs and alcohol, and some of the OGs would have seen potential in us and obviously took us in and began to school us and teach us to be uh, better at what we were doing, and that was something that I, um, I fully embraced. There's people that will lay down their lives for you, but along with all that love, there's a, there's a lot of deception, there's a lot of um, addictions, there's a lot of violence, and there's, there's core beliefs that, that you operate and function and that um, have you really living a really unbalanced and unstructured and unsafe lifestyle, not only for yourself, your family, but also for the, for the community and your future. We met in our teens, same crews, same clicks, so we ended up in jail. Um, so I was still staying in touch, kind of, and then I got a call from my sister, I think it was, just screaming and screaming. And, uh, just saying that mums commit suicide. I didn't believe her, but went up to the house and just seeing her there. 
she was like the rock of the family. Um, she just held us all together. So it kind of put me, like if I got into a downward spiral, I would, you know, well, well, you know, just take some pills and pop myself off type of thing because my mum had done it. So it was, it was hard for all of us. His mum pretty much become like a mother figure to me. I'd just always go to her whenever I needed help. Obviously I was, you know, down and with, with my mum gone and she stepped in and just really took me in. Anya was sexually abused. She was um, stabbed multiple times, unconscious, stopped breathing, and she basically had, had passed on. And, it, and at that point of time, you know, you, you can't really do anything. And it, it left me in the corner with nothing else to do but to reach out to God. And, there, there it happened right then and there. I got down on my knees for the first time. I reached out to God and I prayed to Jesus, you know, that if he could help her, that he could heal her, that he could save her and he could protect her. And during this time, I was inside prison. The Lord gave me this sense and vision while I was down on my knees. And I looked back into the corner of my cell and I had this flash and this vision and I seen Ania's face and I, I become peaceful within, within my heart and I felt like that she was in a, in a better place as we'd say. And I'd go back to the phone and you know, I'd be talking to people on, on, on the other end and they were saying that she was gone and that there was, um, you know, one more resuscitation left that the, if you wanted to go ahead with it, then, then you could, but just to let us know that they'd already done it 20 times and if she did come back, you know, she'd be brain dead. And I just said, look, man, I'm at peace. Uh, I feel like, you know, she's happy where she is, but I said that I'll never give up on her, so we're going to do this one more resuscitation so that she knows and that we know that we never gave up on her. This last resuscitation took place and her heart began to beat again. It took like three to five hours later and she was able to come back and speak to me and when she did, this is where life changed for me. She told me everything that I had done in my cell when I was kneeling down while I was praying and what I was doing. And she also told the doctors everything that she had been going through. I, I was fully pledged into the gang life. And right then and there, Jesus just showed me that he was real and he, he answers my prayers right on the spot. And right from that day there, I fully embraced Christ into my life and life's never been the same again. Left the gangs, left that lifestyle behind. I, I just knew that, that I had to make changes in my life and clearly that was the biggest one first and foremost is to not turn my back on my brothers in the gangs because they're still family and I love them, but basically just to turn my back on the lifestyle. The Bible, when I began to read it, it said to love your enemies, to pray for those that curse you. And it taught me how to forgive and that forgiveness gave me peace and changed my mindset. Going from the woman I was to now being married, um, you know, not drunk every second day or whatever, or on drugs and actually still going to church and 
going to family's parties and saying, no, no, you know, no alcohol for me. Like, what? <laughs> I kind of blew them away. I've heard one brother say to me, brother, it seems like you've, you've kind of given me some hope. And just, just, just to hear that, it's just like, well, there is hope. And, you know, through, through the journey and being, being bold about my faith and being open about my changes, you know, behind the scenes I've had all, all types of gang members, you know, just reaching out and either supporting me or being encouraged, inspired, or even maybe they're searching for change too. And it, it, it's, it's been quite a blessing. And, you know, I just, I just really want to make things count. For me to forgive people who had done some pretty, pretty bad things to me, um, you know, it's, it's brought me peace. It's brought me peace. I've been able to not only forgive them, but to forgive myself. Mm. If you can't forgive yourself, um, you know, you're still going to have that torment within your mind, and it's just, it's just so much more peaceful now. The power of being able to forgive them releases me from, from any of those grudges or any, any of that tension that may have been holding me down or holding me captive, waiting, waiting with this vengeance spirit to get back at those that, you know, I believe that that time deserved what was coming. We still have huge battles, <laughs> but knowing that, you know, knowing that no matter what I do, God loves me for all my imperfections, just my flaws, my everything. Um, and it's just amazing. It's, 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 yeah, it's just a love that you won't find anywhere else. <laughs> yeah.